हेलो गाइस दिस इज डॉक्टर सिमरन एंड यू आर वाचिंग डेंटिस्ट्री आई मेक वीडियोस ऑन डेंटिस्ट्री एंड डेंटल रिलेटेड टॉपिक्स एंड इफ यू फाइंड दिस वीडियोस यूजफुल प्लीज टू कंसीडर सब्सक्राइबिंग एंड क्लिक द बेल आइकन सो दैट यू गेट अपडेट्स व्हेनेवर आई पोस्ट अ न्यू वीडियो सो टुडे वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट नॉन कैरियस टूथ लीजंस सो स्टे ट्यून्ड primary cause of tooth substance loss is dental caries however there are certain other non carious conditions which eventually results in the loss of tooth structure so these non carious tooth defects or we also call it as wasting disease of the teeth is a gradual loss of tooth substance characterized by the formation of smooth polished surfaces so now the wasting diseases of the teeth can be caused due to the physical causes or the chemical causes so the wasting diseases of the teeth due to the physical causes are attrition abrasion and abfraction and due to the chemical causes are erosion so first let's see the attrition attrition is the most common way of the tooth wear attrition is mechanical wear of the incisal or the occlusal surfaces of the teeth and it occurs as a result of functional or para functional movements of the mandible that is the tooth to tooth contact as in the mastication and it can be on the proximal surface or the occlusal surface if it's on proximal surface there will be this will lead to the widened proximal contact areas decreased mesiodistal width of the teeth and decreased interproximal space and if it is on the occlusal surface it will lead to loss or flattening of the occlusal surface or facet formations or what we call as reverse cusping of the occluding elements can be seen here this will lead to loss of vertical dimensions of the teeth and there will be gingival irritation that may develop so what can be the etiology the patient's functional movements should be evaluated and history should be taken about any habit like tooth grinding or bruxism that might be resulting from stress airway obstruction or sleep apnea so what are the clinical features so clinically attrition appears as a small polished facet on a cusp tip or a slightly flattening of the incisal edge okay and then there is gradually reduction of the cusp height and flattening of the occlusal surfaces with age then there is also leading to tooth sensitivity because there is reduction in the cusp height and the tooth structure is being lost so there will ultimately be tooth sensitivity and even there can be tmj problems because of the reduction of the cusp height and this will lead to the reduction in the vertical dimensions and this will lead to overclosure so ultimately tmj problems may also develop and there may be complete loss of cuspal interdigitation and when the enamel is worn away it results in an extrinsic yellow or brown staining of the exposed dentin so there might as well be staining that we can see now let's see the abrasion so it is an abnormal tooth surface loss or pathological wearing away of the tooth substance it is resulting from the direct forces of friction between the teeth and the external objects or from the frictional forces between the contacting teeth components in presence of an abrasive medium so what all can be the etiology abrasion can result from the improper brushing techniques or improper brushing force or bristle stiffness or it can be also because of the habits like holding pipe stem between the teeth which will lead to depression abrasion that is uh, on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth that is because of the holding pipe stem between the teeth okay then there be, this can be also because of the tobacco chewing it will cause generalized occlusal surface abrasion then then also because of the vigorous use of toothpicks between the adjacent teeth that will also lead to abrasion so now let's see the clinical features so the toothbrush abrasion is most common example and this lesion may be linear in outline following the path of the brush bristles the way the brush bristles move it will be uh, in that way and will be linear and is usually seen as sharp v shaped notch in gingival portions of the facial aspects of the teeth it will be seen as sharp v shaped notch in the gingival surfaces of gingival portions of the facial aspects of a tooth 
then the surface of the de defect is usually smooth surface and the tooth may be sensitive to hot or cold and there might be pain that might elicit while probing. Then it is generally seen involving the cervical enamel and dentine and is usually on the facial surfaces of multiple teeth. This is because of the improper brushing technique. So now let's see the ab fraction. It is a pathological loss of tooth structure. It is a pathological loss of tooth structure due to strong eccentric occlusal forces resulting in micro fractures at the cervical areas of the teeth leading to wedge shaped defects. Okay. So these micro fractures occurs as the cervical areas of the teeth flexes under such loads. With each bite, the occlusal forces causes the teeth to flex and the constant flexing of the teeth will lead the enamel to break from the crown from the cervical areas usually on the buccal surfaces. So the etiology of the ab fraction is parafunctional habits such as the bruxism or clenching of the teeth. So the tooth flexes during these abnormal forces or these abnormal occlusal interactions. This will lead to lateral or axial bending of the tooth. And this will lead to the tensile or compressive stresses that generates in the cervical region of the tooth. And this will lead to micro fractures that will be on the cervical enamel and there will be tooth loss and this is how ab fraction takes place. Now let's see the clinical features of ab fraction. These lesions are characterized by sharp notch. This is the sharp notched or wedge like lesions that we can see here and with sharp margins and internal line angles. Unlike abrasion that has smooth saucer shaped defects. These forces can also lead to loss of the bonded class 5 restorations. Okay, and these defects are generated at the thinnest region of the enamel that is at the CEJ and are confined to the gingival third of the clinical crown. So now let's move on to the fourth and the last non carious tooth lesion that is the erosion. It is because of the wear or loss of the tooth surface by chemical mechanical actions and in the continued presence of the demineralizing agents with low pH. And it is an irreversible loss of dental heart tissues by chemical process that does not involve bacteria. Now erosion can be classified as intrinsic or extrinsic. Now the intrinsic erosion is caused due to the endogenous acids of gastric origin. The causes of this kind are recurrent vomiting and regurgitation. So the recurrent vomiting can be due to the eating disorders like the anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa or this can be also be due to the medical conditions like some GI disorders or metabolic or neurological disorders and regurgitation can be due to GERD that is gastroesophageal reflex disease and erosion occurs when the acid reflex passes into the pharynx and comes in contact with the lingual surfaces of the teeth. Okay. Now the extrinsic erosion is the common etiological causes of this kind are occupational factors that is in like in wine testers or in professional swimmers. Then diet that is if we include more citrus fruit juices or acidic beverages or carbonated drinks or this can also be caused because of the medicaments or lifestyle. Now let's see the clinical features of erosions. So these lesions are generally present as broad, shallow and saucer shaped defects involving the enamel and dentine. There are no sharp line angles and the margins are not well defined. So there is no well defined margins of these defects. And the surfaces appear smooth and polished. And if the erosion is because of the regurgitation of the stomach acids, then it will lead to the palatal surfaces of maxillary anterior teeth to erode. That is the erosion will be seen on the palatal surfaces of the maxillary teeth in cases of regurgitation. And if it is because of the extrinsic erosion, this commonly leads to the dissolution of the facial aspects of the anterior teeth and the buccal aspects of the posterior teeth. 
So that is all about the non-carious tooth lesions. I hope you like this video and if you do, please show some love by giving it a big thumbs up and also share it with your friends to make their life easier as well. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more such content. Also, if you have any queries or questions or you want me to cover any other topic, you can contact me on my Instagram handle, the link for which is there in the description box down below. So see you until next time. Thank you.